the Sinclair ZX81. No colour, no sound, no joystick port. The industrial design may have been on point, but it had absolutely none of the makings of a viable gaming system. And yet that's exactly what it became. So sit back as I wind down lack of memory lane and dust off some relics from gaming silent film era. Top titles that push the limits of a system that has a lot of them. And so first off, fans of the platform can probably sense this one coming. To begin, it's got to be, what else could it be but 1K Chess? Red Hot Low Spec Chess Action. That's what we're here for, isn't it? Okay, okay, thrilling, no, interesting, well yes, I think so. From early on it was pretty obvious that Sinclair's optional 16kb RAM expansion wasn't really that optional if you wanted to do much of anything at all with your ZX81, except playing very minimalist chess as this title proves. Doing exactly what it promises, this is a chess game crammed into the very meagre 1kb of memory of the unexpanded machine, featuring most of the rules of chess and even an AI opponent. Now, as a game, this has absolutely nothing to recommend it. The user interface is bafflingly simplistic and the AI won't put up much of a fight against anyone with even a passing interest in chess, but that is totally missing the point. Even back in 1982 when this came out, it was seen more as a feat of software engineering and efficient coding than a really usable program. Far better was available to anyone with an expanded machine already. The full source code was published in your computer magazine not long after release, and well it really shows what an achievement this was. Not even a full 1 kilobyte of code, just 672 bytes to be precise, the rest taken up by video memory and other system overheads. To this day, 1K Chess is regarded as a bit of a holy relic amongst hardcore assembly coders. A monument to ultra-concise programming. It's only recently that anyone has managed to come up with a smaller implementation of the Game of Kings. Doing a lot with a little. That was what the ZX81 was known for, and 1K Chess embodies that perfectly. Pushing the limits of this little machine's tiny memory, creator David Horn came up with something that lives on in legend. I think now though it's time to move on to, well, maybe safer ground. Something with a slightly higher thrill quotient. It's 3D Monster Maze. Once again, a title that delivers exactly what it promises. It's a 3D maze game with a monster. A T-Rex, no less, the star in what was perhaps the ZX81's first killer app. Released in either 1981 or 1982, the internet seems divided on the exact date, 3D Monster Maze proved that this sleek black slab of the future was a worthy addition to any home. Serious work may have been out of the question thanks to its terrible keyboard, but you could definitely have some fun with it, once equipped with that 16k RAM pack. And fun, well, that's what this game is. The first person 3D perspective was still a novelty, not the first game to adopt this viewpoint, but still an early leap out of the 2D flatlands. It runs at a decently brisk pace too, not a given in an era when many games were still sadly constructed in basic. The gameplay is hardly complicated, find your way out of the maze whilst avoiding the lumbering prehistoric horror, that's all you need to know, but it is brilliantly executed. It's been called the first survival horror game, you might think that's over-egging it a bit, but well, it might not be that far from the truth. It's easy to forget just how early this appeared in the history of gaming, a time when nothing more than frantic button mashing was the order of the day for most games. This though offers something a little different, creeping suspense, rising tension that blooms into pants filling terror when the Rex hoves into view, a whole new experience for a generation of shaken gamers. Even today this will get your pulse racing if you can let yourself be drawn in. Being stalked by the mostly unseen beast seems to trigger something primal, the anxiety ramped up by the stark status updates below. You need nerves of steel not to turn into a keyboard slapping wreck when he's on your tail, another date with his jagged maw in your future. 
It's amazing how well this game manages to gloss over the ZX81's deficiencies and still come out looking great. The total silence and colourless graphics look almost like design decisions rather than limitations of the hardware. A cassette that sold many machines, I'm sure, and helped set up the ZX81's buoyant gaming ecosystem. And so let's stay in 1982 for the moment, a good year for the ZX81, and have a quick poke at 49er. Published by The Software Farm, a company that quickly built a name as one of the ZX81's premier developers of non-shite games, supported by their beaky mascot, the Cosmic Cockerel. 49er, well, it has something pretty special about it, something that made it stand out a bit in 1982. High resolution graphics, or pseudo high res graphics, if you want to get technical. Yes, the ZX81 display wasn't just limited by the lack of colour, it was by default text mode only, its graphics composed of just 64 predefined characters. Games like Monster Maze made the best of it, but more detailed images were off the menu, at least to begin with. It didn't, though, take all that long before clever coders managed to work out ways around this, and the Cosmic Cockerel was one of the first to come up with the goods. It worked by essentially tricking the ZX81 into drawing a new character every line. You still couldn't just draw anything you liked, it had to be composed of bytes found in a small section of the ROM, limiting the patterns available, hence the pseudo prefix. Done well though, it could still look pretty good, and certainly opened up new possibilities that were exploited nicely by 49er. Probably inspired by Dig Dug that had appeared in the arcades just a few months previously, 49er adds a little bit of a twist on the formula and a whole lot of style and playability that many ZX81 games lacked. Playing really well, it's surprisingly fast and responsive, a well-tuned arcade experience. No doubt one of the finest games you could buy on the ZX81 on its release, in fact one of the better games you could buy on any home system back in 1982. It may be completely monochrome and totally mute, but it stacks up pretty well against anything the then industry giants Atari could offer the same year, and at a fraction of the price. So, whilst we're about it, let's take a look at another one from the software farm, it's Rocket Man. Jumping ahead to 1984, the ZX81 was not just on the wane, but dead in the water, discontinued by Sinclair after just three years on the market, its successor, the ZX Spectrum, now riding high. The Cosmic Cockerel was though still pecking out releases, even when others had abandoned the old bicolour bit masher for greener pastures. With over a million machines sold, there must have still been a few fans out there to gratefully receive a top class late release like this, even if all the big money was now in systems with high end features like sound and usable keyboards. Somewhere between Jetpack and Chucky Egg, Rocket Man presents us with a single screen platform of the type that was probably already a little bit old hat even then, but in other ways it's weirdly innovative. Once again it's pseudo high res and once again brilliantly done, this technique does tend to lead to a lot of glitchy graphics artifacts, but here it's kept to an absolute minimum, everything looking pretty sharp and clean. The controls at first feel a little bit floaty till you get the hang of them, a little imprecise, but well hold on a minute, this came out in 1984, let's not forget. Yes, the dark days before anyone came up with the crazy idea of a platform hero that didn't control like complete dog dirt. Even the not yet Super Mario was lumbered with those fixed stiff jumping mechanics that made every leap an uncontrollable Hail Mary. With Rocket Man though, well you can switch directions in the air, control your fall and grab onto ladders as you bounce around the level, giving it a satisfying elan. It may seem like a minor point, but intuitive accessible controls were major innovations in gaming, and Rocket Man seems to have been heading in that direction before anybody else. 
And now we're running out of road a little bit. The ZX81, for most people, already not much more than a distant memory by the mid 80s, at least in the UK. But, well, maybe not everywhere. This is a pretty deep cut, even by my standards. It's Embusca dos Testuros. In Search of Treasures, the literal translation, a game that hails from Brazil. The unusually elaborate opening animation telling us that this is, well, an unusually elaborate game for the ZX81. Pitfall seems to be the obvious inspiration for this, a huge multi-screen platformer, something that no one else attempted on this lowly black box in this era. Yes, it's low res only here, no fancy graphics techniques in use, but that doesn't mean it's not impressive. An awful lot of care and attention seems to have been put into the creation of this, an incredible monochrome odyssey, 313 screens in all, each one an elegantly crafted action puzzle. It is brutally difficult, even playing a hacked version with infinite lives is going to take a heck of a lot of patience to get much past the first few stages. But if you can persevere, an awful lot of blocky action waits to unfold. It's fast, it's smooth and it's all strangely engrossing, the essence of old school platforming expertly distilled into a tiny thimble full of action. Coded by Brazilian teenager Tadeu Coringu da Silva and rescued from total obscurity in recent times by Murillo Sariva de Queiroz, this is a very well hidden gem. The creation and rediscovery of this game is quite a story in itself. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to delve deeper, something I would recommend. So where can we go from here? Well, I think we're going to have to make another decades wide jump into the future. No surprise really, the ZX81 went, well, fallow for an awful long time, even more so than other 8-bit machines, releases completely drying up for some years. So let's take a look at a Neo Retro Classic from 2016, it's Against the Elements. Pseudo high res, yes indeed, but also isometric 3D, a first for this combination on the ZX81, well I think it might be. The sort of 3D game that became a big deal on the ZX Spectrum, almost its signature manoeuvre, but if you thought its older, creakier, crappier brother couldn't handle it, well you'd be wrong, but understandably so. Night Law, Head Over Heels and about a thousand others help to define Spectrum Gaming and this does a darn fine rendition of that paradigm. Puzzle solving 3D platforming is the vibe as always, set across a pretty large and interconnected map. Moving platforms, patrolling enemies and lots of naughty little skill and ingenuity problems, you know what to expect, but all really nicely done. And considering the massive, massive restrictions of the ZX81, this really is a thumping victory for the old achromatic ambler. Isometric graphics like this caused a real stir when they appeared on the ZX Spectrum back in 1984, but the ZX81 is so much less powerful. It's not just the lack of sound or the text mode graphics that held the old girl back when compared to its slightly less crappy sibling, but a slower CPU and the higher processing overhead, especially with pseudo high res like this. Then, considering even with the expanded RAM it's still just 16K, well that is some magic being woven by programmer Paul Farrow. You know, it really wouldn't be hard to mistake this for a Spectrum game. A graphically polished adventure with the sort of complexity you rarely get on this hardware. In fact, let's hold that thought because this game does support the Chroma interface, a modern colour add-on for this formerly colour-free computer. And yes, slap on a bit of colour and this does look, well, exactly like it could be a Spectrum game. Bravo! But hold on a more colour on the ZX81, sacrilege surely. Well, maybe, and anyway, I think this is a road I'm not going to go down for now. A number of wild expansions have increased the capabilities of the ZX81, but let's stick to more or less the original hardware for this one. The hard-tuned ZX81 of the future may be a topic for another video. 
And so, for the finale, let's go full circle back to the completely naked and unadorned 1K ZX81 with some true non pseudo high res and nose dive. Yes, a very stripped back version of the real fictional game from Charlie Brooker's Black Mirror, ported and pared down by none other than longtime Sinclair luminary Dr. Beep. As it turns out, true high resolution, sidestepping the problems of pseudo high resolution, is possible on the ZX81, with yet more clever trickery. Usually requiring a compatible RAM pack, though many are or can be modified to be so, but it is possible to achieve it with just the stock 1K if you can squeeze the code in there. Dr. Beep definitely has the mojo for this sort of thing though, managing to pack in a simplified but still playable version of this game, one that should run on any ZX81, in theory. Apparently there are still some compatibility glitches with some machines, but well, let's not get bogged down in that. We'll just revel in the fact that Dr. Beep has become something of a one-man army when it comes to 1K high-res games, knocking out what seems to be several dozen. So let's have a quick peek at another one, Qbert. Yep, it's Qbert, slimmed down to the tiniest of footprints, but still looking good and playing well. In fact, better than the full-on 16K version, to be frank, the result of some ridiculously intricate Z80 code, I'm sure. The sort of thing that would have had the editors of your computer beating a path to Dr. Beep's door if this had been around a few decades previously, no doubt offering a fortune of tens of pounds. And now I think the end draws near for this video. I could, I could go on, but this seems like a good place to wind down the one bit bandwagon, your patience running out, even if mine isn't. I really thought I'd have a hard time finding stuff for this video, 3D Monster Maze, a couple of the better high res games, and well, that would be it. Let's face it, the ZX81 had a pretty short commercial life. But no, there's loads and loads more, both ancient and modern, so let me know what I've missed out, won't you? I'm sure you will, and I will say goodbye, and I'll see you next time.